Happy Palm Sunday to everyone present here. May the Lord bless each and every one of you for coming. It's our turn to blend our voices to sing together, and we are beginning with hymn number 261 from CGS, 261. It's a lovely day. It's a wonderful day. It's the beginning of the Passion Week. We want to look up to God that um, as we go through this week, thinking about the suffering of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that the purpose of his suffering will be fulfilled in our lives, yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah. For our internet audience, wherever you may be, we say happy Palm Sunday to you too. May the Lord bless you. Yeah. If you live locally or you are visiting and you like to be part of the service, you are very welcome. This is the Apostolic Faith Church, the branch on number 13, Penn Hill Road here in Bexley, DA53EP. You can join us um, as we blend our voices to continue with our service this morning. 261, all glory, Lord, and honor to the Redeemer King. Let's say verses 1, 3, and 4 of this. Verses 1, 3, and 4 after the introduction.
Plan 83 to
stand up to sing 264, at the end of which Brother Upe will lead us in congregational prayer. Father, we thank you. Amen. Jesus Christ, we thank you. Amen. The Lord of Lords, we thank you. Amen. The King of Kings, we thank you. Amen. We say Hosanna, Amen. Hosanna to your name. Amen. We look backward and we can see all those rejoicing saints that were thronging the streets of Jerusalem as you were marching in. Oh Lord, we glorify your name. Amen. We lay our palm on the ground. We salute you and we honor you. Lord, you came triumphantly. You walked in triumphantly that your people may be delivered. Oh, walk into our church this morning. Triumphantly, oh Lord. Give us victory. As your word will come out, Savior. We pray you open our hearts, open our ears, open our minds, and let it come down. Let the fire from on high. Send the Holy Ghost, oh Lord. Bless us today. In Jesus' name we pray.
this morning for saving my soul, Amen. for sanctifying me, Amen. and for filling me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I also want to thank him for his faithfulness. Yes. God has been faithful through the years. I want to also thank him for his provision, for his protection, Amen. and for his guidance all these years. Amen. Without him, we can do nothing. Right. And I also want to thank him for bringing us to the United Kingdom safely and that we've been enjoying the environment and the love and care of the people of God. Yes. I pray that uh, as we all meet here, very soon we'll have to go back to the United States, but we, our prayer is that Amen. God will prepare us all Amen. and make all of us rapturable Amen. so that we all meet in heaven where we'll meet to part no more. Amen. Please continue to pray for us in the United States as we continue to pray for you. God bless you all.
read this morning from the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 19. We'll read from verse 29. Luke, gospel, chapter 19, from verse 29. And it came to pass when it was come nigh to Bethphage and Bethany, and the man called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you in the which at your entering ye shall find a cold tide, whereon yet never man sat. Lose him and bring him hither. Amen. And if any man asks you, Why do ye lose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, Because the Lord hath need of him. And they that were sent went their way, and found even as he had sent unto them. And as they were losing the coat, the owners thereof said unto them, Why lose ye the coat? 34. And they said, The Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jesus. And they cast their garments upon the coat. And they said, Jesus, thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way, 37. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. First, I bring you greetings from the saints in Pullman, Washington. We appreciate the prayers of uh, the saints here in Bexley and all of Western Europe for us. Uh, We continue to seek your prayer support for, for us in America particularly in Pullman, that the work of God will continue to spread in the U.S. as it is spreading here in Western Europe. This morning, with the help of the Lord and your prayers, I'd like to speak on what God has laid heavily on my heart. It's that the Lord hath need of you. That the Lord has need of you. You know, I, I uh, have been, we've been enjoying London uh, or the United Kingdom uh, more broadly. Last Friday, I went to work uh, at the University of, uh, of London, uh, in central London. I took the overground, the underground, the tube, and I made it back home safely. And when I got back home, I I knelt down and prayed a simple prayer, thanking God for bringing me back. And then there was a a device at home. It's called an Echo or Alexa. That device uses the speech recognition system to perform an ever-growing range of tasks. I I looked at Alexa. It's It's an intelligent system at home. And I spoke to Alexa on Friday night. I said, Alexa, are you glad to to have me back? Alexa said, you are welcome back. (laughs) I spoke again to Alexa. I said, Alexa, do, do you need me? Alexa said, no, I don't need you. You know, but I thank God, even though Alexa did not need me, God needs me. And not only that, uh, the good news this morning is that God does not just only need me. God needs you. He needs you. And he needs you. When we think about Palm Sunday, the stories that, that easily come to mind for many, maybe Jesus riding on the call to Jerusalem. For others, it might be people spreading their clothes in the way. 
For others, it might be the passive sight of the multitude of people praising God, saying, Hosanna in the highest. But this morning, those who have made good sermons with the help of the Lord, this morning, uh, the Lord said, we should not go in those directions. This morning, the Lord will have us consider an obscure, little, or seemingly, and, and not that adjective, seemingly insignificant part of the story, the part of the story that many of us, uh, many times, uh, always leave behind. The cult, the man who owned the cult. <laughs> the part that seems insignificant. Maybe there's someone, and I don't know why God is bringing this message. Maybe there's someone in this congregation. Maybe there's someone in Western Europe, uh, nestled, uh, sitting, uh, watching somewhere where they felt like, oh, uh, they, 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 there's nothing that they can be used for. The good news this morning is that God can use you. He needs you. This is a special trip to Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. You know, all the, 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 the three Gospels uh, uh, wrote about this. But Jesus had been to Jerusalem before, many, many times. Uh, in fact, if we look at, uh, into the book in which we are reading this morning, the book of Luke, the Bible says uh, in Luke chapter 2, verses 25 to 39, uh, Jesus was brought as a baby to be dedicated in Jerusalem. If you look at uh, the same Luke Gospel, chapter 2, verses 41 to 52, he came to Jerusalem with his parents. You remember, he was engaged in his father's business. And then they they left him, and they had to turn back, and they saw him discussing in the temple. If you look, uh, even read further in Luke 2, 2, uh, you know, Mary, Luke 2 verse 41 says that Mary and Joseph went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. And you can almost tell that they brought Jesus with them. But uh, of all of this trip, and many, many of them, this special trip to Jerusalem was special. Jesus was not going there just for fun. He was not going there to to see the temple. He was not going there to just see the people. He was not going there to just uh, uh, embrace people. He was going there for a purpose. He was going there for you. He was going there for me. It was a trip uh, with a purpose. A purpose-driven trip. A journey uh, to Calvary. You know, Jesus has, uh, had, uh, we were told that uh, if you read uh, Luke Gospel chapter 19, the beginning there, uh, in fact, if you read chapter, uh, chapter 18, Jesus has healed the blind Bartimaeus. He was passing through Jericho, uh, uh, Jericho to Jerusalem. It was just about 20, 20 miles, so to say. But uh, it, it took him a while because he was busy. That was a busy part of his last week on earth. He healed the blind Bartimaeus. In Luke Gospel chapter 19, he had an encounter with Zacchaeus. And then we came to this very point in, in verse 28 of Luke Gospel chapter 19. And uh, the Bible says that, verse 29, the Bible says that, uh, and it came to pass uh, when he was come nigh to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives. Seems like many things are happening at the Mount of Olives. Uh-huh. Jesus is going to come back there. Yeah. This, this particular time, Jesus gave an order. You know when he speaks, the song says he speaks with the voice that wakes the dead. You just let the Lord speak to you this morning. Let the Lord speak with the voice that wakes the dead. Let the Lord command you this morning. He wanted to use something, but that something was tied down many times in our lives. 
God wants many people, they, they cry, oh, they are not using me. I'm not being used. Who, who, who says that? God wants to use everybody. If the whole world will come to Jesus, they will have work to do. They will have something to do. But what, what hinders us many times is that we are tied down. This cult was tied down. He had a purpose. In fact, the prophet Zechariah had prophesied many, many uh, years before now that uh, Jesus would ride on a, on a donkey on a colt into Jerusalem. And the colt, the object to be used was tied down. Are you tied down? Am I tied down? Why give few reasons uh, why uh, that tie people down? You know, the first thing, sin will tie you down. All right. True. Sin is destructive. Yes. The Bible says uh, uh, the devil has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Right. You know what? Make no mistake. Sin will destroy your life. Yeah. Sin, sin will set you on a path that you can, you, you look and you wonder, how did I get here? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Keep within the fence. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Keep within the fence. Uh-huh. No, 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 no. For those who are safe, don't think, oh, maybe there's something outside. You go outside. The devil is just waiting for you. One strike, it will strike you dead. Sin is destructive. Sin will tie you down. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 says, Wherefore, sin we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin we do so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Sin ties people down. And if there's anyone here this morning, you are thinking, oh, oh, that I can be used by God. And you have sin in your life. You cannot be used effectively by God. If you see have sin in your life, all you need to do is take a step to Calvary. Take a step to Jesus. He will deliver you. Just a little talk with Jesus right. makes it right. Yeah. It doesn't have to be uh, uh, a long prayer between now and tomorrow. It could be, but when you say, Jesus, have thou son of David, have mercy on me. Deliver me from sin. The Lord will deliver you. He's waiting to meet you more than halfway. You know what what has tied many people down? The blessings of life. The blessings of life. The blessings that God himself, the giver, has given you. The blessings that God, the giver, has given me. It sometimes ties us down. The possessions of life. The comforts of life. You know, someone called it the stuff of life. There's nothing bad about them. God provides us good cars to ride. He provides us houses to live in. God has blessed with wives. God has blessed with husbands. God has blessed with children. Many years ago, I, I had some uh, folks, and God help, would say, oh, uh, my children cannot come with me to prayer meeting." My children cannot come to Bible study. It's their bedtime. Hmm. Ah! Children of God! The blessings of life! You don't bring the children to prayer meeting. You don't bring the children to to, to, to Bible study. Are you ready to go and look at them in the the dungeon, in the cell? When, When they don't come to the house of the Lord, this person will say, oh, my children, my children, my children. May God deliver us. The blessings of life. Oh, you know, when people sometimes, uh, and we've seen, the people of God have seen this over and over. No job. 
and they are praying, God, provide him a job. Provide that a job. The people of God are praying morning, afternoon, night, and God provides a job. Oh, brother, we didn't see you at prayer meeting. Oh, my, it's my job. It's my job. Ah, may God deliver us. The blessings of life. We need to be careful. Yeah. Know that rich young ruler in Mark chapter 10, verses 17 to 22. We won't be able to read all because of our time. Jesus told him, he had come to Jesus, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? It's not good, but one, and that is God. Jesus told him all the commandments. This good master was more like <laughs> right on Jesus. Just continue to talk about those commandments. I got them in my pocket. <laughs> I, you know, you talk about honor thy father and mother. I honor my father. I honor my mother. I, I, I do all of those things. Oh, I go to church on Sunday. I do everything. <laughs> but Jesus was reaching for something more than that. 21, then Jesus beholding him loved him and said unto him, one thing thou lackest, one thing is tying you down. Is some, someone here, one thing is tying you down. One thing is not making you answer God's call for your life. God has good intention for you. God has good purpose for you. The whole of Western Europe will be one for Christ. But there's someone here this morning. There is someone here this morning. There is someone here this morning who is holding back from God. What are you holding back from God? One thing Jesus told him. See what Jesus told this man. Go thy way. Sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come, take up the cross and follow me. The Bible says, and he was sad at that saying. And went away grieved, for he had great possessions. Not suggesting this money that you go and sell your house and sell your, your cars and everything and come and meet uh, uh, our pastor and our superintendent and say, oh, oh, you know what, I want to come and follow you, follow you to Norway. That's not what I'm saying here. But you need to place priority I need to place priority on the things of God, on the God's work, on God's purpose, more than houses, more than cars, more than work, those work, those things, those, the stuff of life that stuff God, that stuff the love of God out of your heart. Some people are tied to their past. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Let's quickly read that, please. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Brethren, I cannot myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Say, brethren, this one thing, Paul did not say, I do 10 things. Many times we crowd our lives with too many things. Paul said, this is what is important. This one thing, not two things, not three things, not four things, not five things. This one thing, forgetting those things which are behind. You know, people are tied to their past. For some people, it could be the blessings of the power. Oh, the Lord has blessed me. Don't worry. Don't worry. Church, it's okay. For, for many, they are the failures of the past. They are the defeats of the past. Many of us have got past about rejection. Many have got past about pain. Many have got past about how a brother maltreated you. How a sister injured you. Many of us have got past about all sorts of things. Right. Right. Hear the word of the Lord. The past will tie you down. When you choose to remain stuck in your past moments, you become incapable of seizing the present moment. And it blindfolds your eyes of seeing the glory of the future. 
that God has prepared for you. I will say that again. When you remain stuck in the past, you are incapable of seizing the present. What God has for you today, if you are incapable, when you are living in the past, and you become even more incapable of seeing the glories of the future. To relieve, to relieve and relieve and relieve the past is to relinquish the future. You remember the impotent man at the pool of Bethesda. That man had been lying there for 38 years. And Jesus came. Jesus asked the man, will that be made old? Do you want to be made old? Is there something in your life that I can fix? I want to use you, but you, 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 I want you to be lifted up. Oh, the man just started digging into the past. It is the people. When they come here, they, I don't, they don't give me help. Who can help you if God has not asked them to help you? Nobody. They may try. People may do anything. If God has not ordained that someone will help, they will not be able to help you. This man began to make complaints, complaints upon complaints. Oh, they have just not, uh, I've just not been lucky to be pushed there. He was, Jesus was not asking him about the past. Jesus was asking about the present. Do you want healing? Do you want blessing? Do you want salvation? Do you want sanctification? Do you want baptism? Do you now be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? The past can cause us a lot of injuries. If not for the mercies of God. That man at the pool of Bethesda. But Jesus saw beyond. Jesus who was merciful. You know what the Bible says? The mercies of the Lord. They are new every morning. His compassions they fail not. You know what? Everything is older every morning. Your house is older every morning. My, my, my life, my body is older every morning. My cars are older every morning. But God's compassions. You wake up on Monday, it's fresh. On Tuesday, it's new. All the compassion of God lifted that man. Oh, Jesus healed him. Oh, you know what? God will send you compassion this morning. They pass. They pass. What about strained relationship? Oh, a brother has offended you. A sister said something about you which was not true. And sometimes, <laughs> maybe it's affecting you. Even in the gospel, have you seen a situation whereby you cannot even defend yourself? Right. Or have you seen a situation? There was a, a time in, in, my, in, my, in my spiritual life, uh, I, I just thought, oh, there was a man, uh, let me be of help, and uh, took him as a student, and this student became a pain in my leg. Became a pain. His name, <laughs> I won't even mention his name. And uh, I began to have in injuries, hot feelings. I was still working. I was still preaching. <laughs> oh, God. God knew I was not right. God knew I was not right. You know what? This, this, this man said, he reported me to the school. They, they were going to, I just, I just got my job, my dream job. I was going to lose my job. And I said, God, let me do something about this. Let me fight for myself. God said, don't fight for yourself. God said, don't, don't talk to anybody about it. Just come to the altar. Nail it on the altar. You know what? I began to say, Lord, this does not make sense. Lord, let me do something. I just said, no, you can't do something. You know what? Many years passed to cut the long story short. The man, I said, Lord, I, I, it, took, it took about two years. I said, God, I forgive. And when I forgave him completely, I was liberated. I was free. The coat, my coat, my blessings had been tied. They were losing. God began to losing them. God began to losing them. You think the pastor did not see you. They will not see you. When you are having grudges against them, God will, God will, you know that man, he came and he said, oh, these children, they look so good. And God said, don't look at their eyes. Don't look at them. <laughs> there is one of them. It's in the bush. Hallelujah. Go and look for him. <laughs> 
You know, when you see have something in your heart against a brother, against a sister, how would the Lord walk? You not be able to walk. Your past will chain you down. Your past will debar, will stop God's purpose for your life. You need to let go and let God. I say that again. You need to let go and let God. Let God do the work. Let God release. Let God command. I want to finish quickly here because of our time. You know, when we untie the things that hinder us, we let go. when we let go and let God take control, we will be blessed. Yeah. We will be blessed. Yeah. You remember the blind Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10, verses 42 to 46 to 52. Uh, he, he was going, he didn't know that was his last opportunity to see Jesus. Yeah. So, the, you know, he, he was just uh, laying there uh, a beggar. But this day he heard the rumbling of the city. It was just in this same account as Jesus was passing from Jericho to Jerusalem. Maybe he, he, he must have inquired, who is going on? And he said, Jesus. You know what? Jesus is passing this way. Amen. This morning, Jesus is passing this way. Amen. And they said, oh, he, he, Jesus, that man, he began to cry out. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The people came and said, oh, keep quiet. He is too busy. He is not for you. you know, let me tell you by the authority of God's word this morning. God is here for you this morning. He wants to use you this morning. Oh, you know what? The Bible says Jesus stopped. Your cry this morning will make Jesus to stop. He Jesus stopped and he called him. Call him for me. <laughs> oh, you know what? They said he called thee. The same people who told him he should keep quiet came to deliver God's message to him. They said he called it. In. When the man got to Jesus, you know what? How he got to Jesus? He had to let go. The Bible says he took his cloak. This one is a hindrance. Whatever may be hindering you this morning, be ready to just shake it off. Be ready to take it away. You remember Abraham. Abraham had one. one God was specific. God said. Take thy son, not the other one. Thy only son, right. the son of promise. Right. The Bible says early in the morning, Abraham did what God commanded him to do. If he had been dilly dallying, yeah. uh, going to tell the neighbors, yeah. see what God has told me, oh, I don't know what we are doing again in our church, oh. You know what they will tell you? They will tell you bad news. Yes. Abraham did not do that. He no. said, God has said it. I have to do it. And he went and took the son. And God himself blessed Abraham. Yeah. You know what? It's been many years. But we still think about Abraham. You know the widow of Zarephath. Let me end with that widow. She was gathering stick. That was going to be the last meal. The very last meal. And when Elijah came in, he said, just do my own first. Let go of that meal. Let go. That, that meal to that widow was the coat. She was hanging on to it. The man of God said, let go of it. Just do God's own first. Ah, she wondered, this is the last meal. For me, am I? <laughs> no way. Just go and do my home. She did it. She was fed. God blessed her. I don't know what you are hanging on to this morning. I don't know what is so precious to you that you begin to hang, hang, and God, it may be one year, it may be two years, and you may be hindering the work. You may, that, that thing that you are hanging on to, because God has a purpose for your life in this great work, yeah. in the apostolic faith work, you need to let go of that. Yeah. Would you let go this money? Would you untie your coat this morning? Would you untie your coat? Would you let the Lord use you this morning? The Lord had need of you. He will bless you. He will strengthen you. He will use you. And God will take us to heaven. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we come before Thee with all of our hearts, with all of our strength, with all of our minds, with all of our will. Lord, we are on bended knees. Have mercy upon us. Untie us, Lord. Untie us, Lord. You know our hearts. For they are an open book before us, Lord. Even right now, Lord, untie us, Lord. Release us, Lord. Save us, Ansamo. Sanctify us. Fill us with the Holy Ghost. Take total control. Let thy will be that. Have your way. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.